Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. I hope you are enjoying Cobra Convergence 7, and this time we have a special interview with Peg Warmers. The pegs are warm because we have Peg Warmers. Uh, hello, hello, Kevin. Um, Kevin has uh, participated in Cobra Convergence for several years now. Uh, so, uh, Kevin, if you don't mind, uh, just uh, introduce yourself and tell us about what you do uh, on your channel. Hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, my channel is called Peg Warmers. Uh, I do a variety of different toy related content. Um, I'm maybe one of the less G.I. Joe specific people on Cobra Convergence, but G.I. Joe is my all time favorite IP. Uh, don't let the giant He Man box confuse you there. Uh, I, I love G.I. Joe, and so I do a fair amount of joke content every year, and I love being part of Cobra Convergence. Uh, and uh, we're happy to have you, of course, every year. Um, I love what you do. Um, I have not met every Cobra Convergence participant in person, but I have managed to meet you in person a couple of times. Yeah. So uh, that was pretty cool. Um, so um, you, uh, you, you're not specifically or I guess entirely Joe focused. You have right. a broader collection. Can you talk about... Uh, what you collect and how G.I. Joe or Cobra fits into that. So as a kid, I collected a little bit of all of the 80s brands, right? But G.I. Joe was always one of my main focuses. Uh, a lot of toy lines like maybe Mask or Hasbro's Cops and Crooks, I would have a handful, you know, a bad guy and a couple good guys. But G.I. Joe was like the line that I collected hardcore. I remember counting how many Joes I owned at one point, and it was 250 uh, that counted a few doubles because I had like a, two Vipers and two Motor Vipers um, from yard sales. And when I did that count, I was like, I wonder how many there are and if I can get them all. And that started the like trend of trying to collect the whole series. Uh, eventually, like when I was in middle school, uh, the internet gave me the ability to find out how many G.I. Joes there were. And I started systematically working at it. Um, I, the only one I don't have right now is a Goldhead Steel Brigade. And when I was really working hard at collecting them, he was considered a variant at the time, and I wasn't worried about variants. And now I'm kicking myself for not buying him at the price he was back then. Yeah, they, they, they've they uh, it the prices have gone up a little bit, a little yeah. bit. Um, uh, so you um you you were involved with uh, GI Joe, you collected GI Joe among other things. Um, at one point, uh, well, you I would say you're a, an experienced collector as an adult. You're an experienced toy collector. Is that fair to say? Yes. I transitioned from playing with toys to collecting toys probably in high school. I'll, although I did do some odd, like how toy photography has become sort of a, a popular thing for adult collectors. I did stop motion animation with toys when I was in high school and college um, as I was working on collecting a lot of those Joe's in, in that run, um, but I have been a, an adult toy collector my entire adult life. Uh, so for you, it wasn't, for, for a lot of us, there was a gap. Like we would right. uh, play with toys, we'd move on to other things, and then eventually we'd come back. But for you, uh, it was a, a transition from uh, being a kid playing with toys to being a collector of toys, and you've continued that then. Right. Um, are there any big trends that you have seen in uh, in your your experience? Uh, anything that uh, you, you've noticed that has changed, especially more recently, as we're uh, maybe catering more toward adult collectors? I, I tend to notice the the way people collect or the order that people collect has shifted somewhat. There, there's a lot of people that get into collecting a toy line and they go for those like Grail level toys first. And people will post a picture of their collection. There's nothing right or wrong about it, but like they'll have a very small collection with a couple of extremely rare figures. Whereas I feel like when I was early on collecting, people were trying to get like all of the main figures, and and you dreamed of having the the Steel Brigade or the um, Brazil, Brazil Special Mission guys and things like that. But now those seem to be sort of like the feather in the cap, and you try and get them before you worry about having everybody from '84 or '85. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can I can relate to that a little bit because I didn't do it that way. Um, and now I, I'm thinking if I had bought that rare stuff 
when it was back then yeah. when it was more affordable i could have got that and then the common stuff is still around you know you can then you can just pick up the rest of the stuff at your leisure yep. um but uh, uh you have you have some some decent uh uh joe items in in your collection don't you i see the uh, mobile command center box behind you that's my childhood best friend's box from his childhood nice Nice. Uh, well done preserving that. I yeah. I have none of my boxes from back his, then. Well, his dad wanted it out of the house. He's like, Kevin, come pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> that's well. Hey, that's it, that's a great thing about people knowing that you're a collector. Yep. Uh, that when they really really want to be done with this stuff, please come and get it. So, um, uh, you uh, uh, so your channel is Peg Warmers. Um, Correct. and your 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 channel has kind of gone through some uh some eras you you had yes. different approaches and it, it's evolved over the years uh talk to us about what you're doing now with your channel and kind of how that's changed uh up to this point so in the beginning the, the channel was originally called seo toy review and we focused a lot on like kids toys and, and the current trends but i am such a big collector that i kept saying like well can i just do something that interests me on a certain day uh and and it sort of became wednesdays became the collector day um and so there we would have uh like kitty videos and then and then something more for adults and over time that slowly kind of took over especially then when copa went through and it became hard to do any content related to kids uh it we just dropped i dropped doing all the kids content and then uh fairly recently there was a sort of a bigger rebranding and uh some friends were trying to do a podcast network type of thing and so there was a video game show and a movie show and a toy show. And we were all doing kind of podcasts in a similar format and trying to like be on each other's shows and things like that. And it, it kind of worked. And then, uh, you know, we sort of changed formats again and I, I moved and I had a lot of stuff going on. So now I'm shooting most of my episodes in my basement. I do still try and do guests once in a while, sometimes over StreamYard like this, uh, sometimes in person, um, Back in May, I ha did a couple of Batman ones with the guy from the movie stuff, Hack the Movies, um, and I went to his studio and shot those. So, yeah, um, and I I love your show. I love what you do. It's it's always fun. Um, uh, new episodes you usually have uh, set for a premiere. So uh, if I can catch it, so we can you know actually chat while watching, that's always uh, always a good time. But uh, but here we have Cobra Convergence upon us, and um, uh, my understanding is that you you know what you're doing for Cobra Convergence. Um, uh, we're recording this a bit in advance, uh, right. so uh, you, you may not have it ready yet. But um, but by the time this goes up, uh, your your contribution should be up, so you can talk a little bit about it if you have any thoughts or just any general uh, ideas of what you would like to do for the Convergence this year. So early in the planning process, somebody mentioned that the uh, CC7 logo could kind of work like a 007 uh, concept. And, and we started talking about doing like espionage and saboteurs and whatever. And the first thing that popped into my head was the Agent Faces figure that was a mail away in the Crimson Guard uniform. And I know he's not actually a Cobra figure, but because he's dressed in a Cobra uniform, I just decided to do him anyway because the the rules for Cobra Convergence are kind of loose and you can do yeah. what you want with it. And I just decided I, after doing uh, Cobra Commander and the the Cobra Law guys and Televiper and whoever else I've done in the past, I was going to kind of change it up this year and, and, and do a Joe. Uh, and and a, a, a very creative choice. Very creative choice. I like it. I like it. Um, uh, so, um, but this is maybe uh, a figure that some of like the the older collectors or some some folks that focus either on vintage or on certain other eras they may not be uh, as familiar with. Um, you get uh, some of those other eras of GI Joe figures beyond just vintage. What do you think people are missing when the, if they're not looking at these other eras of uh, of GI Joe? There were a lot of new characters that came out in that Joe vs Cobra era, and I know. People were not a fan of the body st style. We called it the new sculpt era. Um, interestingly, Agent Faces had both a new sculpt figure and an O-ring figure. Um, his his new sculpt figure was just sort of a traditional Joe, and he came with some rubber masks you can put on him uh, during the Spy Troops era. 
And then there was also the, the mail away figure, which I think might have come first, but I, I would have to, you know, actually check the releases on that. But I was super excited to be able to mail away for a Crimson Guard, whether you took the helmet off or not. Um, but I always love guys with removable helmets and, and things like that. So I thought it was super fun. Um, I ordered multiples. I was actually in college. And uh, when I would find Joe's at uh, Toys R Us or KB, actually, was where I shopped a lot in college because there was one at the mall uh, near my university. I would save the the points and, and you know, every month or so I could mail away for another one because the, the window was pretty long for, for mailing away for those guys. So I had three or four of those Crimson Guard agent faces. Uh, that it's very nostalgic. The idea of collecting flag points and sending yeah. away for something, maybe they should bring that back. Um, yeah. yeah I, I, I don't know if the fun. last one was doc, like 25th anniversary had doc and, and the agent faces one. And there was an unmasked storm shadow during that new sculpt era also. And those are, those are kind of the last mailways I can remember from GI Joe. Well, I would say, I mean, uh, they should introduce mailaways for um, G.I. Joe Classified, but a lot of them you, you do kind of have to order online anyway. So, I don't know, yeah. they, they kind of all are, are all mailaways, if, if you, depending bit. on how you look at it and depending on how you shop for them. Um, but, um, uh, yeah, uh, you said that uh, G.I. Joe, that's your, your number one property. What's, what, what would be number two? What's, what's your second favorite thing? So... When I first became a collector, my number two property was Star Wars. Um, when I when I sold off my most of my childhood toys, I kept GI Joe and Kenner Star Wars. Um, but I think now, because uh, sort of Ken Star Wars just sort of ended for me. Like once I had all the Kenner guys, um, I collected during the prequels, and it just didn't keep my attention as much. I think GI or I think He Man has sort of taken that secondary spot for me. Um, yeah, and that 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 attorney uh, box behind you—that's that's a flex. It's that's yeah. nice. Good, well done. That's very good. Um, so um, uh, so you've got your your Cobra convergence plan. Um, you you've got your your um, uh, your your topic picked out, and it's a really cool one. Um, uh, going back, let, let's talk about like the ones that you've done before, uh, because you, you have participated for several years, uh, of the, of the episodes that you've done in past Cobra convergences, uh, do you have a favorite or do you have any that stand out to you? Uh, so one of my favorite ones for like personal reasons is the Cobra law episode. Uh, when I was in college and doing the stop motion animation stuff, I, did a, a multi-episode storyline. It was basically Toy Story in a dorm room, and the toys were trying to escape. And we had so many characters in it that my friend and I, who, like, wrote it and edited it together, um, we never, like, finished recording all the voices while we are in college. So we actually finished it post-college, and one of my coworkers voiced Sergeant Slaughter for me in it. And that came out the year that he was retiring from work. So I got him to re-voice uh, Sergeant Slaughter for me for that video. And so that's kind of a special thing for me. He's one of my best friends. He was actually my best man in my wedding. Uh, and so to have him do literally record those lines at work on his last day of work was kind of a special moment. Um, so I, I like that one a lot. I had you as a cameo in my Hooded Cobra Commander episode. And last year I did one about the kind of the wackiness of the cartoon and some ugly figures with my friends from Farpoint Toys. Um, in sort of a roundtable podcast episode, that, uh, uh, those were all a lot of fun, and and I've been mean to Cobra Law in the past. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for forgiving me. I, I but uh, but I, I love I, I loved your Cobra Law uh, video as well. So um, yeah, you mentioned the stop motion. You've now mentioned the stop motion a couple of times. Do you still have any of those uh, stop motion things that you made? So a lot of it's on YouTube, but has mm. been like grabbed because of content ID. We used to just use popular music because yeah. production beds are hard to like find with the kind of the motif you want. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the stuff has been grabbed over the years. I tried to like remove the audio. We don't have the original files anymore to like, go back into the editing software and just mute the audio, the music tracks. So it's really hard to remove that music and try and fix it up. But there are some videos on my channel where I put in little scenes that I tried to pull the audio out of. Um, I used to do uh, commercials for a local convention called RetroCon. 
Um, it, it's it's bit so time consuming though. I really don't yeah. do it much anymore. But it it was basically pre having a YouTube channel was my favorite way to interact with my collection. Now it's making these videos. That sort of has become my my way of playing with the toys as an adult. Um, but before that, it was the stop motion stuff. Um, I think you you have uh, provided a great segue about how how you enjoy your collection because people have different goals. Uh, some people want uh, everything uh, as pristine as they can get. Uh, some folks uh, still still play with the toys. Um, GI Joeberg does some really cool yes. uh, video movies and I love their scenes stuff. with them. That's awesome stuff. Um, what do you how, in what mode do you most enjoy? Uh, your toys and your collection uh if i had time i would probably still be doing the animation stuff because that it's just so much fun but it, it's super time consuming so for me now mostly it's it's one making videos about toys that i am interested in talking about and then you know displaying stuff here i i recently moved i i lived in a house for 12 years uh that was basically all my space and there was kind of toys everywhere um I had a couple rooms that were mostly focused on toys, but there was literally stuff everywhere. Uh, and so I, I now moved out after I got married. Um, I have a family now, so I have two stepsons. So now my toys are in the basement, and I'm working on slowly setting that up. And it's it's a challenge because I'm trying to figure out how to fit a big collection into uh, a smaller space and make it make sense. Like There's sort of an L-shaped wall down here that I was using as my carded wall. And I started on one end with just one sample of a bunch of different toy lines I thought were kind of interesting. Then I transitioned into some master of the universe stuff. And then I was going to finish the wall with GI Joe. And when I got to the end of GI Joe, I realized I probably just should have started with GI Joe because <laughs> I don't have enough room for Ninja force and star brigade. So yeah, I, it's just I, a challenge. Yeah, I can relate. It's it's um, it, it can be overwhelming and like trying to fit things into a smaller space. I can relate to that a lot. Um, th that is a challenge. Um, uh, your experience as a collector, you probably have a lot of um, advice and suggestions for uh, for newer collectors, uh, people who are either just getting into it or they're they they're accumulating a collection that is now starting to take up some space. Um, of course, again, everybody's going to approach it differently, but. Um, in, in your in your vast experience and knowledge, uh, do you have any advice uh, for folks who are getting into it and are looking at maybe expanding a collection? The number one thing that I tell collectors when I talk to them is collecting's a marathon. You don't have to own it all now. Uh, enjoy the process of collecting the things. Enjoy the new things you get. If you are collecting stuff so fast you're not opening it or looking at it or enjoying it or displaying it, you're just scrolling it in a closet. You're not getting the full satisfaction out of it. So maybe slow it down just enough that you can kind of keep up with that. I I know that I do it sometimes. I'll order a whole wave of something and just never look at it. And then it's like, I forget I own it. I'm like, wait, did that come out? Uh, did I did it did it arrive? So especially if you're trying to collect like all of vintage G.I. Joe or whatever, right? You don't need to own every figure all at once. Um, it's fun if you have like a checklist of the order you want to get things in, but I tend to go by what I can find at a reasonable price. It depends how you shop. If you shop at toy shows and toy stores, it's a little bit more of what's available versus uh, if you're shopping via eBay or whatever, where, where almost everything's available at all times, then you're just kind of looking for the deals or the thing you you want the most. And then my second piece of advice is don't be afraid to let something go later. If you buy something and you decide it's not giving you the satisfaction you want, most things in your collection you can replace later. If it has something sentimental, like this being my friend's box, I wouldn't sell that. Um, if it was your childhood figure or if it's something really rare that you just aren't going to see again. But you know, if for some reason you need to downsize your collection and you decide, I, I don't need the 90s Joes after I collected them, it's okay to let them go. You will find them again. Um, or if you decide you bought all the vehicles from a couple years, but now you just don't have the space and you want to slim that down to your core vehicles, that's okay. It's your collection. Nobody else's opinion of it matters. Uh, whatever you have in your collection is fine. But some of my favorite things in my collection are like weird things that kids wrote on. Like I have a, a Vamp 2 that says G.I. Joe Headquarters written on the side of it. 
and I have a Ram box that says good and bad men written on it. Clearly the kid stored his figures in that box. You know, those little weird things I love. The, those box. have a history beyond just the toy history. There's somebody, some kid's history is there. Some yep. kid played with that and it was important to somebody. Um, well, uh, I, I feel like I, I got to uh, make sure I focus enough on Cobra. It is Cobra Convergence after all. Um uh, is there a Cobra character that uh, resonated with you the most uh, when you were either watching the cartoon as a kid or reading the comic book or playing with the toys? It, was there uh, a Cobra that really stood out to you? So 1986 is my favorite year of the G.I. Joe toy line. Um, it's kind of when I got into it. I had some of the earlier figures from a neighborhood boy who, who kind of outgrew it and passed stuff along to me. And I had seen some of, like, the first season of the cartoon, I guess. Um, but I was confused about who some of the characters were with, like, the early figures who were very interchangeable. I, I had a hawk and a short fuse I thought were both Duke as a kid because they didn't come in the package. Close enough, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but so in 86, uh, the year that I first really started getting figures, I mean, the Viper and the Bat are amazing. So those are two of my, my all-time favorite figures from the line. Um the cartoon, the voice for, for Cobra Commander is amazing. And as a kid, I, I wanted the battle helmet Cobra Commander so bad, but never never found him. I was too young to get him as the original Malaway. I did get the hooded Cobra Commander because he was offered for such a long period of time. Um, but he was it, basically Snake Eyes version 2, Storm Shadow version 1, and Cobra Commander with the battle helmet were on my like dream list of things to stumble upon as a flea market as a kid, and I never found any of the three of them. Now, you have them now, right? I do. Right. I have them as an adult collector. Good. See, the, the, the growing up, being an adult, uh, it, it has its advantages. Yes. Um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, um, um, you're, but you're a little bit younger. Like you said, you came in in about uh, 86. Um, right. And how long did you stick with G.I. Joe? I'm sure you had other toys that you played with as well. But how long through that line did you stick with G.I. Joe? So, like I said, I, early on, I had a lot of, like, 84, mostly 83, 84 figures that the, the neighbor kid gave me. Um, and then I missed a lot of 85 for some reason. Uh, I had a lot of friends that had those figures because it was right about the right age for me to get into it. Uh, but my mom was kind of anti-military toys. Luckily, my dad's mother, my, gr my grandmother on my, my dad's side, didn't know about these uh, rules my mom had set for me. And bought me army toys for christmas um and so i in 86 i started getting gi joes and i collected 86 87 88 89 probably into 1990 where i was still asking for a lot of them and then um somewhere in there i was getting a little too old where I, you know once in a while i'd grab somebody like i got some of the street fighter guys in late elementary school, I got Ninja Force Snake Eyes just because I was shocked to see a new version of Snake Eyes. And I think the last figure I ever got was Mace from DE, or he was Battlecore, I guess, but he yeah. you know, was supposed to be a DF figure. And I saw him at just at a grocery store. Uh, they had a real short little section of toys like cap guns and stuff like that. And they had a, a peg of G.I. Joe's. And I was. I don't know, maybe in seventh grade or something like that. And I just got super nostalgic to like rip a figure out of the package. And I picked him for some reason, picked him. Uh, and I think that's the last one I ever got at a store. Well, Mace is, uh, is happy that you picked him. That's uh, that uh, I have looked at that figure. Interesting figure, actually uh, uh, not a bad figure design at all. I, th no. There's a lot that I like about it. Um, but if, if you, were actively collecting through maybe 90 1990-ish about 90 um, maybe 91 a little bit yeah you, you might have missed out on some of the the wackiness and the craziness from like 93 94 but some of that seems to be like uh stuff that you would like is the is there anything that you discovered as an adult collector from the vintage era that you missed out on and once you found out about it you were just really eager to to get your hands on so I used to look at the Joes in the toy store, like even when I was kind of in that late elementary middle school era and I wasn't buying a lot of toys, I was sort of transitioning from playing to collecting. I would still go look at the stuff. I remember being blown away that they reissued Keel Hall, that blue Keel Hall. I was like, yeah. I, you know, a dream figure of mine, right? The, the flag is a grail. And they, they, they re-released him. Like, that's so neat. Uh, so I, I knew about a lot of the stuff that came out. 
but I couldn't appreciate all of it. Like the the space star brigade and the aliens, I was like, this is so dumb. Even in college, I passed on the manmanals they put out at KB. Uh-huh. I was like, this is so stupid. And then, you know, over time, my opinion softened, and I still think they're ridiculous for GI Joe. But I love that they're ridiculous. And, you know, of course, now have gone back and collected them again, wishing I had bought them, you know, when they were on the pegs. Yeah, I, uh, um, I've uh, uh, I also think they're ridiculous, but I've had a lot of fun with them. Yeah, um, that, there's no denying that it's still still a good time. Still a good time. I actually um, bought well, all, all three of the aliens at a Jocon in Florida, Disney World, when I was in college and cut them off the card backs in the hotel room just to look at them left the figure the weapons on the tree and i'm like now looking back i'm like that was so dumb why did you cut them <laughs> off but i was a loose collector at the time so i was like yep just take these right off <laughs> I, at, at, the, at the time they were probably uh they were 20 bucks a piece. affordable you know yeah. you get you get one to to keep sealed and then one to open i wish uh, i had done that that would be you know i you'd have to uh drain your kid's college fund to do that <laughs> yes. but um but there has been um, more interest, I think, uh, in, I would say, compared to me, younger collectors. Um, uh, do you see Do you see a lot of folks uh, now maybe in their early 30s, mid 30s, who um, uh, came into G.I. Joe later now starting to get into collecting? Do you see like a, a, sur- a, a resurgence of uh, folks from uh, later era- eras of G.I. Joe that are getting into it? So at one point, I, I was focusing on uh, G.I. Joe reviews a fair amount in, in like the previous format of the show, and uh, I decided to focus on a lot of the 90s stuff because I felt like there were less reviews on it. Like, to sit there and, and do a review of, of Firefly, who has, you know, amazing reviews done by yourself and Formby X257, I, I just felt like, let me try and do some of the Ninja Force stuff, let me try and do some of the Eco Wars and things like that. And I've been amazed at how many comments I've gotten on those videos from people that were like, this was my favorite figure as a kid. And, you know, th- their little stories about picking it out at a certain store with their mom or whatever. So I, I definitely think there's that younger crowd that grew up with those that are enjoying it now. It's nice to see. And it's something that I always uh, remind I've, I've reminded other people that no matter how ridiculous the figure is, that that is it is probably some kid's favorite toy. Yep. Uh, so keep that in mind. There's a sentimental attachment to each and every one of these. Um, so uh, we've talked about what you're working on for Cobra Convergence. We have a few more minutes here. Um, do you have thoughts on the future of Peg Warmers? Um, uh, any uh, ideas of what's coming up, you know, farther down the line in the future or, or goals for yourself, anything that you're collecting that you really just uh, are, are hoping to get your hands on within the next year? Well, uh, so as far as collecting goes, I collect a lot of different lines, uh, mostly the modern stuff. I Unfortunately, I feel like, and maybe it's not unfortunate, but I feel like I spend more time collecting, chasing the pre-orders for new things than trying to go buy vintage stuff. Although I think I get just as much satisfaction out of owning the vintage toys. Um, I would really like to focus on getting all the rest of the accessories I need for my G.I. Joes. Like I said, I have all of the figures. I have all of the Kenner Star Wars figures, but I don't have every accessory for either one of those lines. Um, I've been trying to make the Joe accessories a priority. You know, I have lists I take with me to, to toy shows. Sometimes that gets unwieldy, trying to remember exactly what that gun or, or missile launcher looked like. The Telling yellow missiles apart is almost impossible at times. Um, I haven't quite switched over to like downloading the all the image files I need. That, that's the more advanced list when I get it a little bit shorter. Hopefully, I'll switch over to that. Um, so there's that. There's chasing all of the like Super 7 Ultimates from a whole bunch of toy lines that I love. Uh, I'm really hoping they announce Beachhead at some point, my favorite G.I. Joe for Ultimates. Um, the Classifies line has been fantastic. I, I love that they switched. They kind of gave up on the the Fortnite boots and everything and have just started recreating the figures in that style. I, 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 I can't decide if I like the classified look better or the ultimates look better. There's something special about them both. Um, the, the ultimates figures being very cartoon accurate and the, uh, classifieds being sort of like how you envisioned the toy looking as a kid. 
Um, but I like both of those. And so I, I, I'm doing a lot of collecting with those. I would love to grow the channel more. I want to try and get back to having more guests on my channel, but, um, I used to actually film a full month in advance, which made it possible to schedule things and work around people's schedules much easier. Uh, since I moved, I basically film every week. And so it's very hard to get ahead. Um, maybe this summer that'll finally happen and, uh, that'll help me out a little bit with trying to, to do more of those kinds of bigger and more special episodes. Um, but I have a lot of different toy lines or parts of lots of different toy lines here in my basement to, to talk about someday. You, you have, you have, um, a, a collection with depth, uh, yes. and you could, you could say many things about it. So whatever you do in the future, I will uh, happily be there and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, so uh, that about rounds out our time, but before we go, uh, uh, if you have any parting words for the audience, uh, I think I will uh, turn the, turn the mic over to you and uh, let you say anything you feel like saying. Well, if you haven't checked out peg warmers before, feel free to uh, come over to my YouTube channel, uh, hit that subscribe button. So you see our new content, but also feel free to look through the old content. There is a lot of stuff on there. There are some GI Joe playlists to make it a little easier to find some of that content. If you're a GI Joe specific collector. Um, and I have to say thank you to you hoodie uh, for organizing this. Uh, Cobra convergence has been, uh, such an amazing thing. I The year that we did the big Thanos spoof for Avengers, um, I just had so much fun. It was like it, it, it was like the strongest connection I had had with other creators because we were, you know, chatting about what was going to happen. We were getting the scripts. You knew what other people were going to say. And then you'd see the video clips later and you're like, oh, my gosh, they did such a good <laughs> job. You know, we all had to, had our own silly lines and um and it, it just the execution was fantastic at the end. That was and, that was a lot of fun. And a, a credit to to Timmer, uh, that was his yes. idea, and he did the follow through on that. But that that was a lot of fun. It's been a, lot, a little while since we've done that, but um, it is kind of a trip to to work with people and to see how uh, different creators interpret these uh, scripts that we come up with these wacky ideas. Uh, that was a fantastic. Uh, that was a fantastic time. I, it would um, it well, would be amazing if there was somebody out there, even if they weren't a creator, if they had like a writing talent to be able to come up with an idea for a a concept that a lot of people could join in on, some sort of a plot, you know, a loose plot kind of thing. Because that that it really is such a hard thing to try and put together. We've talked about it a few other times, but mm -hmm. to to get that put together while everyone else is trying to churn out their own content as well as uh, you know, you put a lot of time into promotional videos and, and logos for the, the whole event. It, it's a lot of work, and uh, I appreciate it, and I hope the whole fan community appreciates it. Well, thank you, um, and thank you for your contribution, which, Ian, should be up today. Um, it should be up by the time you see this uh, this interview. Um, and uh, make sure you check out uh, the Peg Warmers channel and subscribe. Um, there will be a calendar of all of the presenters uh, on my website, hcc788.com, with links. So if you don't even know where to find it, if you check there, you can click on the link, and it will take you directly there. Um, but, uh, that's all, that's the time we have for now. Thank you again, Kevin, for being in Cobra Convergence. Thank you for, uh, sitting and talking with me and I look forward to seeing uh, what you do in the future. All right. We'll see you.